Herzlich willkommen, liebe Welcome back, uh, the, uh, Papa, my partial magazine in Susas. Welcome to the take at uh, 3 p.m., your most favorite magazine. Let me welcome you. And if you want to believe the market researchers, they would say at present that uh, the bathroom is the modernization place number one in Germany. Highly interesting, makes sense, as we have heard this very week, namely that the bathroom more and more contributes to feeling well. You start the day there, you can end it there, you can listen to music, you can do many things there. But of course, the bathroom planners, the craftspeople, the traders need to show a response to this modernization wave, and they get prepared to it in a perfect way. And the influence of a bathroom modernization for the interplay of the individual components before and behind the wall will now be discussed with a view to efficiency. We'll see product concepts aiming at uh, modernization and rehabilitation. We have Jens Wischmann with us again. You know he's one of the enthusiasts uh, and the managing director of the German Association of the Energy Business. Welcome, and let me hand over to the experts. Well, thank you, Karina. Uh, no trends today, or t trend drivers, namely the modernization wave. The interest of the Germans uh, in bathrooms has increased. They stay at home more. Uh, they have to. And of course, they like to go into the bathroom, especially if it's beautiful. And for it to see to be beautiful, smart, and uh, uh, sustained. Well, we have already seen now it's about the drivers generally. Today, what about the modernization market in Germany? What is most important? What does it mean for the affected uh, people? Let me introduce our guests. First, Jörg Pütz, owner of Pütz Marketing, uh, not to go, but to grow. We want to grow in, instead of disappearing. He has a lot of experience in the field. He's marketing manager of Hans Groh in Germany, target groups, target group analysis, how to approach them. He knows the industry, he knows the target groups, and I'm happy to have him here. Most welcome. Someone else I've already introduced. He has already been in discussion with us, tested the discussion partner for VDS and pop-up. Dirk Engelhardt, regional sales manager technique, technology with experience in um, key account uh, home and housing matters. He knows what is needed in the bathrooms. And he also has technical expert knowledge, uh, which is also important because we need to know about the interaction of the systems involved. Another interlocutor we'll hear later, Stefan Hoxe from Axor. But first of all, we have uh, a video which has been prepared by Martin Lange from BM, BNM Marketing Data. That's an institute which has uh, been working working for the VDS for one and a half years for the VDS and VDZ. He composed the entire industry data, which is not so easy because it's very valued and manifold, just like the data. Uh, and uh, I've asked him to show us what the modernization market in Germany looks like, especially sanitation and bathrooms. So please let's uh, see the um, contribution by Martin Langen. Thank you. So, uh, welcome today in this round from my side. Let me tell you something about the modernization markets. All of those around there uh, know that 2020 was a great year for modernization. Let me give you a few insights on it, what our observations are. I relate to a modernization study, which we do every two years. We interview more than 1,000 uh, final consumers what they did or what they have planned in this regard. And let me show you the results. First of all, for a start, let me show something different. Uh, 15 days ago, we asked, what about the home office? And uh, where do you want to live after Corona? 
Uh, we asked the people what, uh, how things will change. So it's uh, building and uh, living after Corona. It's a working study which we are just establishing. And that's what I want to show you now. Uh, will you further work in the home office? 27% say yes exclusively, 41% yes partially, several days a week. I was really flabbergasted by that. 18% um, say they will work in the home Home office. Well, that changes uh, the situation totally. People saying I need more space, but of course I can also move out more. We consider the uh, building conditions for 2021, and the clear trend is that the building approvals move out of the cities, which is not due to the fact that everyone has decided all of a sudden in this way, but those who were prepared anyway and were ready for funding went into search radios in Moscow, radius by 15 kilometers, and then they became active, went into construction contracts and the like. And so this has been a knot which has just burst now. And due to that, the old huts in rural areas, the old houses are sold in rural areas, like in my home place 60 kilometers from Cologne, you don't get any old house anymore. Two years ago, everyone was standing empty still. So all of that needs to be modernized, and that's a gigantic driver. Who is renovating there? That's a result of the study which we do. It's highly exciting regarding the age groups which are most active. In On this chart, you can see it. Print it out, put it on your office door on the wall and do it for the right target groups. You will certainly work for the right target groups, but be aware of it, become aware of it. The blue curve is the renovation intensity pursuant to age groups of from 2014, 30 years. In 2014, the 30-year-old was still very active. The classical do-it-yourself customers, this classical target group was still there in 2014, 2018, in dotted curve, 20 uh, gray sick line, hardly any activity in uh, that uh, lower age group. But then instead, a strong increase of the age group of uh, the older ones who now start modernizing, 63, 65, 70 year olds are modernizing now. That's a big difference now. The intensity is also going up by 2020. The intensity of this group of the 55 plus has become once more stronger, much stronger. Hence, the older age group is the target group. That's the most important target group by now. And of course, um, they have it done. They will already know what they want. Uh, but uh, they, you should strongly focus on that. How come that the younger ones don't modernize anymore? Interesting question. Academicians buy new buildings. Uh, the uh, studied people, that is totally logical. They uh, don't have uh, craftspeople, friends. They don't know how to go about it. They don't have time because the couple mostly work both. And of course, they have the money for the new buildings. Uh, they don't move that much. Uh, the movement uh, uh, chain is uh, smaller. Therefore, there's less uh, modernization activity. What about the older target group? Well, they buy e-bikes, uh, camper cars, and so forth. Uh, expensive kitchens uh, and the bathrooms. Uh, they buy. Uh, uh, old cars or uh, camper uh, uh, oldies, and uh, they strongly focus uh, in this way. So please uh, focus on this target group. Now, what actions have been undertaken in 2020? You see a bathroom renovation uh, that has uh, uh, made up leeway with the other ones uh, in terms of numbers and volume. This has become the most frequent uh, renovation, 42% strong growth as compared to 2018. But all renovations have grown, even the replacement of heaters or individual parts of the heating system, the replacement of heaters, uh, in building in, in uh, underfloor heating and the like. All these actions have grown. 
Altersstruktur. The age structure who is modernizing in which product groups. We have seen it's the older ones rather, but in bathroom modernization, it's a bit younger. The gray group, 45.5% below uh, 40 years, a little bit younger, are the bathroom modernizers than the other modernizers. Of course, the budgets are interesting all the while. They have increased constantly since 2014 for bathroom substitution. In the tiles, there is kind of a standstill. But as a matter of principle, there's an increasing budget development, and since 2014, the budget has grown there by 50 percent. As indicated several times already, uh, by 2020, the do-it-yourself comes back. You can measure it based on the uh, pro professional uh, share. 2018, the highest was 55 percent. Professionals did the entire modernization of the bathroom in 2020. This figure has gone down to 51 percent, roughly. Uh, that is uh, regarding bathrooms. In the tiles, it went up a bit. There, the professional people have gained additional shares. In heating modernization, it's uh, the same. It's comparable. The younger ones have a bigger share than the than all modernizers in some total. So regarding energy efficiency modernization, the younger ones do more because it pays. If a 70-year-old builds in a new heating, he only does if he has to because he doesn't pay anymore. Uh, but for the younger ones, energy efficiency topics are very good marketing topic. For the first approach here, the budgets have strongly in, uh, continuously increased for replacement of heating, the uh, modernization of heaters, the situation has remained the same. Now, in conclusion, the question, how old are the things which are replaced there? Well, maybe this is the question, which houses are renovated and so forth. We kept asking in our interviews, how old is the product you are replacing? You see, 20 years on average, the bathtub, shower cabin, uh, toilet, the uh, fittings and valves in a bathroom, it's easy to replace them, only 24 years old, then 28 the tiles, and behind the wall, 30 years. Now, it's interesting uh, to know how what was built and how much in the past, because uh, we know what was built, so we can make clear statements. So precisely 30 years ago, there was the peak of um, a new building activity after the change in Germany. You see the second high peak, 1994, that was the very peak. And if you count back, you see the modernization wave reaching from 2018 until 2025. That is roughly the time span where the mountain built in and then um, became smaller again. Hence, uh, many buildings are now in the modernization phase. But looking only at on the building, it's, it's not correct. You also need to know who is living in it. So you need to look at the combination. You have to ask who is modernizing and which buildings uh, are being modernized. Having said this, I'm already through. If you want to know more, there's a rehabilitation study. It was done after the beginning of the corona development. Many aspects of it have already been included. Take a closer look at it. And if you have questions, we can come back to that in the chat. Well, so much from Martin Langen. As a matter of fact, it looks as if the construction business, including sanitation, heating and climate, uh, will fare well quite uh, through the corona crisis because uh, you will have a stronger focus on your activities at home. It was quite interesting to hear about the age of the uh, activities, and it has come out that the German consumers themselves think uh, they are, it's, it's a little bit younger, 9.7 years. 
years. It's, um, you can also ask, when did you renovate your kitchens last? So there's also a small difference from the perspective of those who paid for it and those who are using it. Anyway, 9.7, so we see 20 plus X is uh, the real age for this kind of modernization. Now the question to Mr. Putz, how do you judge the modernization wave in the sanitation market in bathrooms in our branch of industry? What does it look like? Well, the market prospects are still excellent. Last year, I talked to many craftspeople, and uh, they reported that up to 30 percent uh, more orders were generated last year as compared to 2019. And uh, so far, a lot of things are going on, and that reconfirms what you have seen in the study. Mr. Gerhard, what do you think from the point of view of Give a Rich? What is your view? Well, same thing. The scientifically founded facts of Mr. Lang confirm our gut feeling, our subjective impression from talking to installers and dealers and planners. Yeah, that's what it's like. And the market data that we showed you together with the SSF and VDZ plus 5% uh, compared to the total industry. So sales increased. The question is, so we've just seen um, how the market develops. And we've seen the attitude to living changes with the generations and also based on the pandemic. Um, do you think the industry, is the industry ready for this refurbishment way for the new requirements? We heard about sustainability, smart bathrooms, and so on. Do you believe that um, we are prepared, that the tradesmen are prepared for this? Well, when, when we look at the craftsmen, uh, when we look at the implementation, then, you know, this is the limiting factor. Uh, because there's a lack of skilled staff, so there's a lack of installation uh, capacities. The demand by consumers is greater than what we can do. We are not prepared enough to satisfy all of this demand, and we simply have to wait and see what kind of solutions are possible and how manufacturers can support us to ease the life of a tradesman. What would be the key but the key words from your point of view? How about processes? Everybody talks about it. Um, what are the interfaces? Well, I think you should really take a look at the processes that take a long time to complete a bathroom. Let's talk about planning, for instance. In planning, we need a lot of time. And this is where a lot of time can be saved by process optimization. But for this, it is necessary that you think beyond individual trades, that you cooperate with other trades, and the manufacturers can think about possibilities of supporting the tradesmen. On the tile side of things, there are possibilities today that the bathroom cannot just be tiled in three days, but you can do that in several hours. Okay, I'd like to ask the representative of a manufacturer, Dirk, there's no point, you know, in having great uh, products and combinations before the wall and behind the wall. And we saw some good examples, but a lot more could be sold out there. How do you approach this at Giberich? That really is the question. One aspect uh, may have an impact, and we're talking about um, Refurbishment in housing construction, we have um, public places, hotels, and the catering industry, we don't know how this will develop after COVID. Maybe with the, uh, maybe there will be free capacities amongst the tradesmen who work a lot for hotels. Often these companies are prepared for larger projects and maybe they find it harder to deal with the refurbishment of smaller flats. 
But for these uh, companies, they may find new jobs in the field of uh, um, apartment refurbishment. Um, but as far as processes are concerned, the interfaces lead to losses. Uh, for instance, the tiler and the installer, um, the um, um, sealing um, of the surfaces in the bathroom. Uh, we, we offer integrated transition points um, to make the link easier. That saves you time and money so that beforehand you can discuss things together and then implement the solutions. Another important aspect in order to deal with these uh, limited um, installation uh, resources is pre-assembly that's established with larger projects when uh, large blocks with 50, 60, 70 apartments are refurbished, then you have such processes. And there are smaller installers who say, if I do this with individual um, um, if, if I do this in an individual apartment, I can create such a, um, a wall that goes in front of the wall that can be pre-assembled um, instead of having my uh, uh, fitter going up and down the staircase all the time to get the right parts. And you probably also offer a better quality and a higher value quality because free prefabrication leads to a, a high degree of uh, consistent quality. Yes, and the do-it-yourself share has increased, and one of the other fitters, you know, are saying that they are in competition with online and uh, uh, moonlighters uh, and uh, friends um, building something. And you have to tell uh, the customer, well, it's worth it to ask an expert because it's faster and you have the guarantee, the warranty. And during the study, we heard that do-it-yourself, do-it-yourself, as you know, the uh, trades association uh, um, are saying that how can this be that there's growth or well, the growth increased, well, the, 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 the market increased because people went to the do-it-yourself uh, stores and this increased the number of renovation uh, projects. It's not that everybody installed their own um, bathtub, but small accessories, things that you can do yourself. Now, the difficult projects, you know, I guess those things uh, remain, those projects remain with the professionals. Now, we heard about um, pre-assembly um, in the bathroom academy. Uh, we heard about possibilities of uh, accelerating the processes. Uh, and there are uh, tradesmen who want to roll out such concepts um, in the market. In the early phase, in the boom phase, it's difficult to implement such concepts. and. This is not a complaint um, to uh, the trades people because, you know, things uh, are running and the customer doesn't want to wait. They want a solution now, but there are solutions that can be adapted already. And uh, I see a new generation of uh, trades uh, um, coming up or installers that try out new approaches, uh, for instance, in the field of consulting. Yes, that's true. Many um, uh, installers have become digital. They uh, use these tools to look at whether goods are available, um, but they have created digital platforms where other stakeholders, other tradesmen of other trades come together in order to um, better exchange information on a bathroom um, process, or they, they help each other with planning. And, and implementation, and in some cases, they can save up to 70% in planning or building. So something is happening here. This is also a question of you know the generation, but there are also tradesmen of our age who have opened up to these new developments. So this is not just for the young startups. Uh, the uh, older generation uh, is also moving in this direction. Now, I'd like to point out, you know, if you hear 
how many uh, people work at these things in the trades um, among the dealers, in the sales corporations uh, and corporations of tradesmen. Um, the mid-sized industries seem a little static and, and um, on the back burner, but uh, I think there's a lot of momentum and the innovative spirit has not died out. On the contrary, it's alive and well. Um, there's one market that I find interesting, barrier of free bathrooms, and we'll find uh, we'll have more people needing care, more people wanting to live in their own homes in old age. What is being offered here? Because I see this in the context of the refurbishment market. How should the bathroom be designed for um, senior citizens? Is this something that uh, um, is addressed in, in the analysis or in consulting? Yes, uh, today there's hardly any bathroom without a level uh, shower stall. In the market offers uh, such solutions and it's about uh, a larger shower trays or shower tubs. And the question is, can you still uh, stand or do you want to sit in the shower? Taking a shower has gained momentum, really. Um, it's, um, it's gained in popularity compared to taking a bath and for that you need space too. Now, I wanted to talk about the barrier-free uh, aspect. How about Gibberit in this respect? Well, I'll talk about, I want to talk about bathing compared to taking a shower. 20 years ago, um, it was, you know, people talked about things that are compatible with uh, disabilities, but now it's part of the universal design. A father who wants to take a shower with his uh, young daughter, they can go into, uh, they can uh, go to the shower tray without stepping over barriers or the two of us, you know, older citizens. Now it's a matter of fact. Another aspect that I uh, find interesting, um, there are more uh, regulatory requirements. When I look into the uh, statewide building um, uh, regulations, then uh, the uh, requirements are stricter than uh, when I was a student. And you mentioned uh, the shower toilet for every person, it's cleaner to have your bum cleaned with water, no matter how old you are. And also, it has an advantage because it helps you if you cannot move around so well, or if you find uh, uh, it difficult to move your arms. And it helps you to use uh, the toilet. Um, it's not in the foreground, but it's a positive side effect. Uh, you don't need outside help of a caregiver. And um, if you have a cistern where the water can be connected, if that is behind the wall. And yesterday, we heard that the bathroom today is 20, uh, like 20 um, power outlets. Well, we need a lot of electricity. That was quite amazing. I think we should define a white paper or a standard. There is demand, there is a need. And I think we should think in terms of the right framework of what is needed. So if we have this opportunity, then we should uh, design the bathroom in such a way that we can retrofit, that we think about the need for um, automated things which are barrier-free. There are regulations. Often when we talk to building developers, um, the small ones, I mean, the big ones like Venovia, they don't need any uh, uh, information. But um, the small um, building developers, even in the high price segment, are not aware of these things. Uh, shower toilets, requirements in terms of power outlets, or retrofitability of for, for retrofitability in the future, these things were not really known to the building developer. And I think a lot can be provided um, to people, and it doesn't have to be more expensive, but it's cheaper uh, than to retrofit in five or ten years from now. 
So, talking about bathroom renovation, I think we should integrate some practical experience, and uh, there's Stefan Hoske, is a senior consultant in architecture and design at AXOR, and he deals with the interface concerning what architects do, and he has some insights to share about uh, small bathrooms. Not all of them have nine square meters. I think that figure comes from um, a uh, survey, I think in reality it's more like six or seven, and uh, he will talk about bathrooms and the field of the hospitality industry, and here's Stefan Hoske, and I hope he can hear us. Can you hear us? Hello, can you hear me too? Wonderfully. And I'll give you the floor officially, and I look forward to what you have to say. Hello, everybody, and uh, hello to my former colleague. And uh, thank you for inviting me. I speak from our showroom in Hamburg. I work for Axor. Uh, that belongs to Hans Grohe. I have a few examples from the hospitality area. This is an area where we have many objects like office buildings and so on. Um, but we don't have much space. Uh, it's nice. You can beautify these uh, niches with new tiles and all. Gee, things can be hidden behind the wall. You don't need much space, but you can use the available space to the utmost. We can work over a wide surface without uh, any uh, um, joints so that you don't have uh, any problem with molds. And with many hotel projects, where after five years, they say, OK, we want something new because there's a new trend. Here we have matte white, the new black. Um, and a lot of black is used, matte black at the top. And um, this uh, uh, matte has received a new competitor. And we see new shower technologies. Um, so that you don't have the spray, you can um, can take a shower without a shower door. There is uh, you can um, uh, you, you don't have to step over a barrier. It's all even, and uh, pictures say more than a thousand words. Um, this is a Greenpeace building opposite of the fish market and on a small space, you know, the hotels need to be even smaller than at home and in a small bathroom, it can be stylish. Well, it's uh, the thing what you do, uh, by which kind of modernization, like for example, a stylish heat uh, wash basin in my very small size and beautiful nevertheless, something from old buildings in large cities. You don't try to tear out each and everything in order to renew. Here, a blick on the Elbe River. Here, another example, uh, so a lot of black, uh, the risk of lime deposition, where you can see a lot of spots mostly, but uh, with the watertight uh, tiles and the wooden elements, you can, you can do a lot, and it looks very nice. So in very limited space, you can do a lot, for example, in this white and black uh, design. Everything equipped with large tiles, and you can hide a lot in the wall. Uh, for example, the SAS uh, Hotel in Copenhagen, where we got the contract uh, for the rooms, uh, uh, which are very small, to equip the bathrooms. And you see how beautiful such a small bathroom can look if everyone is uh, fine-tuned well. And there's also the... Uh, head type uh, shower and uh, the, uh, with the rod and the manual uh, 
uh, element. And while at home, the people, of course, also like to have a shower and also want to uh, have it at home. Here, another view. Mirrors are always important. Hooks, two brushes. Now it looks quite opulent once again because uh, of t uh, fire, uh, tiles in the marble look, uh, uh, tiled in matte gold. Here, another example from Copenhagen. Uh, uh, Axel, in the special design, you see the trend of stone. And uh, while uh, this kind of uh, wall, uh, freestanding bathtubs, well, it's, it's uh, an old uh, postal building. With, uh, now they have 83 uh, rooms, uh, everything different design, because uh, they want to offer different things to the guests. Here's something nostalgic. And, uh, well, a lot of different design in the various rooms. Here is minor, smaller room in the hotel in Copenhagen. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we have 150 different shower pipes for every taste. So things can be renovated very quickly. You also see the tiles uh, uneven, deliberately, with the separation. Uh, with the comfort uh, of matte black, which is very trendy at the moment, uh, a bathroom uh, three by 1.50 meters, very small, nevertheless, a nice mirror wash basin with a marble plate on it. Here, the view out of the uh, room, the, uh, Tivoli, uh, Tivoli next to the central station with a swimming pool, which is open throughout the year. So you can uh, swim a bit in the morning, even in winter. Here, another example, uh, the lobby. Uh, well, there, the people can enter, dwell there. The rooms are small. Uh, the hotel is large. Here, something which we also heard about yesterday is, uh, regarding smart bathrooms. So people want to focus on each and every customer entering a bathroom, be it in a hotel suite or at home uh, with various scenarios. Live atmosphere can be adapted. The sound, the water is uh, pre-processed without major separation because of the shower technique, which doesn't splash. And you can control the music with an app. It cannot all be built in. And uh, we have also requests from private customers to take out as much as possible from a small bathroom and yet have all the tec technical uh, gadgets and with all the control uh, options and an uh, impression of nature. Very interesting examples. Uh, 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 well, the bathroom is almost integrated, uh, almost like a kitchen. Now it's integrated into the uh, uh, sleeping room, and you can be tuned in the morning with music, or you can see a video with a summer impression, sunrise, or um, many other things, different scenarios. Uh, well, if you re renovate, uh, all the elements are in nat nature appearance. Of course, you can control each and everything. You can um, st stick on, attach things with glue, whatever you have in mind. A few more examples. The last example, uh, 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 prison, prison, I'm a liberty, a five-star hotel. Uh, bed linen, nice design, many uh, details, and the bathroom there. Well, uh, the old uh, ceiling, I spent the night there. So it's uh, quite a strange to sleep in a prison. Uh, and, well, wake up in the morning, and this ambience um, adapted to this, uh, the uh, separation of the toilet from the sh uh, shower. So design plays a lot of role. Also in modernization, everything is uh, fine-tuned. Problem is mostly that uh, all the color shades need to be tuned to one another. Also, together with the uh, all the other elements in the bathroom, everything uh, adapted to, to the tile appointment. Here, the Hotel Liberty, in this former prison, uh, Babylon, Berlin, also rebuilt uh, prison, and you can 
use each and everything. You can turn uh, hotels, uh, office, former office rooms into hotels just like prisons. It even has an interesting look from outside. And you see the light switch in all the elements. Uh, that's a nice thing in such projects where the investor also dedicates a lot of love, spending a little bit more money uh, because they want the guests not even uh, to leave uh, uh, the room and be around as much as possible. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Stay with us for a bit. Uh, well, I'm qu uh, quite jealous uh, uh, that you report from the be most beautiful city of Germany, my home city. Well, and then, of course, uh, I need to do the next uh, official trip uh, uh, to there to enjoy it and experience it. But uh, an, another question now. Th these are all fantastic things, and you said investors try to like, uh, like to try out such things. For the private realm, well, uh, you, you, of course, you can even buy such uh, bed linen uh, in, from one instance, one-stop shop. And you can get all these different clues, especially for bathrooms. Uh, but uh, now from this uh, swap over from hotels to private customers, what does it look like? Cus uh, people saying, well, I was a guest there. I like it, be they private people, architects, or builders. So is there kind of an exchange? inspiration mutually. Well, uh, there are good examples. Uh, Model 1, for example, have one of our largest handheld showers, uh, pieces of furniture, TVs. Even in very small hotels, you can experience things people take, a take home uh, and say, I also want to have such a shower, such a toilet design. So things have uh, changed a lot in the entire appearance uh, of a room, even in low-budget hotels on the Elbe River. So there are solutions which don't cost too much money, from student homes to uh, first-class hotels with suites. It need not cost too much money all the while. But of course, the, the uh, bathroom is uh, complex. Uh, it's a wet cell. So you need skilled people in order to avoid damage by water. So you really need skilled people uh, who pay attention to each and everything and equip everything in the proper way. Therefore, we strongly cooperate with the crafts and trades. Uh, well, as a takeaway, as learning, this is uh, the appointment almost like a manufacturer type uh, bathroom. Well, uh, when it comes to that dimension, then of course it becomes a little more expensive. We'll present a few more bathrooms tomorrow too. Uh, and after having accompanied some of these developments, you know uh, what the details mean. What about your experience in that sense? Uh, how to go about uh, this kind of modernization? How can it be accelerated in professional terms without doing, uh, without renouncing that quality? Well, I closely cooperate with architects. Uh, in projects, and of course, uh, they uh, consider uh, projects which have stood the test for 10, 20 years and don't. Oftentimes, they don't want to be the first ones to try out new things. And of course, there are brands which are 50, 60 years old, which are not favored that much by architects anymore. So, I would. My clue would rather be regarding the large size uh, tiles, 3 by 1.20 meters, uh, for example, from Gibberich with all the openings, uh, light shafts. Um, uh, with us, you can redesign a bathroom in half a day, including each and everything including shower separation, bathtub, each and everything. And thus, you can save a lot of money. How do you see the future for this industry? Well, by corona, the effect is, even in my own home, where my wife says we should modernize the bathroom, because she says the shoemaker gets the worst shoes. And we also hear it from friends considering kitchen, bathrooms, each and everything. So now many bathrooms are modernized, which would not have been touched 10 years ago. So 
the bottleneck for the craft, uh, this means the bottleneck for the craftspeople, but also uh, customers building bars for uh, 150,000 uh, euro because they don't uh, get the yacht in Mallorca or similar things. So a lot will still come in the future regarding such investment and modernization. The question to you, uh, we've seen wonderful bathrooms and uh, all the inspiration which is coming. Is that an inspiration not only in visual and design terms, but also in terms of professional approach regarding the realization of such things? Well, what we have seen uh, is the experience, the experience in the bathroom for the users, for the consumers, for the hotel guests. And that what is a very strong driver. If you can offer new functions, new shower experience, new well-feeling experience, if you have kind of a private spa experience, then this means uh, to ask uh, what about uh, the situation behind the wall, how to come to, to grips with it in technical and functional terms. And the consumers in the hotels, of course, take along many pieces of experience back home. They wouldn't you know, shower with friends or uh, neighbors, but in the hotels they do. Uh, in terms of realization, well, I think we have to see to it that we involve all the necessary crafts and trades and manufacturers, nurturing cooperation in this sense uh, to make it as simple as possible for all the crafts and trades involved. Well, the products bef uh, in front and behind the wall, this uh, overlap, uh, this is what keeps Gibberit uh, busy, not only by the integration by Keramark. Uh, what about the further development from your point of view? What's your assessment in order to drive this modernization? Well, we've also realized that this is a point where some issues crop up uh, also in terms of uh, friction losses and more efforts than actually needed. And we invest a lot of effort and energy to um, combine the, be the situation in front front and behind the wall, uh, it, well, it's easy, it's, the planners are happy, and uh, the same goes uh, for the craftspeople, if they can easily install, and if it even looks nice, it, it, um, it, it is uh, pleasing uh, for the users. If we think of uh, Gibraltar 1, what we presented two years ago on the ISH, where we connect uh, the situation in front and behind the wall in a perfect way where most disappears in the wall, storage room, uh, things which can be placed in ready-made, which function if wanted with mirror in the installation wall. We, not, we use more room for cabinets, for wardrobes, for shelves. We pack into the wall what shall not be seen from outside, siphons of uh, uh, blo uh, block valves, and thus uh, we create more space in front of the wall because the places are very small and we have seen great such solutions uh, and this means well people t take the ideas uh, back home they tell their fitters well and uh, I want this too in my home so of course uh, there are many reference uh, uh, objects and examples uh, in order to nurture this further in terms of inspiration. Of course, there's also good uh, planning and good inspiration for planning. And uh, something I also like to, uh, uh, like in hotels, is that everything is open and uh, 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 on one level. And uh, especially, uh, well, in a time where we hope that uh, where we open hope that hotels open soon again, and then you have the chance to take a closer look at all these things, and then it's all the nicer to have the things back home. I live in a rental house, so it's not so easy for me to realize such such things. Anyway, thank you very much for the discussion. All the clues. Um, 
But there's a demand for uh, modernization. There are many ideas and clues which we can use for this modernization wave, and we can also use it to increase the standard. Uh, thanks all parties involved. Uh, further information, of course, you find on our Pop Up My Bathroom Instagram uh, channel on our uh, websites. You also get in, uh, English Bathroom uh, information. We also have a chat. Uh, uh, and if you click on the websites, you also find the information of the people who have been speaking today. Uh, if you need further information, and if you are involved in construction, no matter in which phase or as an architect of, or a planner, make good use of these things. It's fun to design bathrooms. It's also fun to use bathrooms. I've also taken along a little of inspiration. And if we go out of this age uh, digital and say, well, now I'm in the mood to tackle such things, we would be also more happy. Let me thank all of you, all the participants, you at home. Thank you very much for your support and your participation. Thank you for now.